And from the rest of Africa, Regional Bloc Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS will uphold sanctions on Mali until it appoints a civilian prime minister. ECOWAS Commission President Jean-Claude Cassibru announced on Friday that the sanctions will be lifted when a civilian prime minister is named. Mali's neighbors took a hard line after last month's coup, imposing sanctions in a bid to push the military junta to swiftly restore civilian rule. The trade restrictions include a ban on commercial trade and financial flows, but not basic necessities like drugs, equipment to fight COVID-19, fuel or electricity. Mali's junta endorsed a roadmap to restoring civilian rule after the coup and appointed a committee which chose 70-year-old retired Colonel Bando as interim president. And joining us to discuss this is foreign affairs analyst Agogo Obo. Good to have you, Mr. Obo. Good to have you. Good to join in with news, uh, Omaka. Thank you. Now, there was so much optimism earlier by ECOWAS uh, envoy that the sanctions could be lifted, but that uh, doesn't seem to be the case uh, now. How do you uh, see that? Well, it's like a chess game between um, the new um, well, the, the military guys in Mali and ECOWAS. ECOWAS had pushed for um, a sort of arrangement where you would have a civilian head of state. But what they've done is to have a semi-civilian. They brought in a former chief of air staff and uh, minister of defense, um, uh, the guy we call, uh, like to call Lucrand. And um, Colonel, Colonel Lundor is a retired colonel, you know, someone who people would have said perhaps uh, they found a middle ground. But here's what they did. They, put, they, they left a civic goita as um, the interim to the vice president, interim to the uh, deputy to the, to the interim president. And then left open the position of prime minister, which most likely be occupied uh, by a, a civilian. But apparently, that um, you know has um, pacified echoes. But still, um, people are looking and asking questions: What uh, manner of um, interim administration is this? Where you have a former military leader in power, you have um, a top member of the Junta Sinigoita as a deputy to. Uh, the interim president, which will last for it for 18 months. So maybe Echo was probably looking and saying, let's be sure that this arrangement is something that will last for a long while, not just something uh, that will be uh, an extension of the junta at the end of the day. Right. But Agogo, where does this ECOWAS stance, you know, leave the junta, especially since the new president has been sworn in, as we you know saw from the visuals earlier shown? Yeah, so the negotiations will continue most definitely. Um, so, you know, for several uh, weeks now, they've been having back and forth, you know, uh, just a couple of days, you even have the chair of the records, uh, heads of government, uh, the Ghanaian president, and uh, the Dankwa Kufa, the community town, and speaker president, Buhari, and that, um, uh, former president, good luck, Jonathan, who is um, the, the going between for the ECOWAS, um, you know, exp expressing optimism that um, this will pacify everyone on, on, on either side. So they're going to push for... Meanwhile, if you think about those, those sanctions, the real sense of it, as uh, landlocked Mali, so they're having um, targeted sanctions at border restriction and then um, inflow of, um, of finances into the country. But that hasn't been um, implemented to the full weight. So you still have money coming in because um, Echo was is thinking, if they, if they apply the full weight, it's, it's the entire Mali that will suffer this whole pain. So... On the one hand, yeah, there are sanctions, but on the other hand, how how um, serious have these sanctions been to the everyday man and woman on the streets of Mali? Right. I mean, no transition charter also has been unveiled yet. How significant and worrying is this for you, if I may ask? No, not just to me, but to everyone. Um, so they've asked for um, 18 months, and people are saying that the coalition of civil society, um, M5RFP, you know, that put up this entire thing, um, have a, a, a bittersweet lesson at the end of the day. Yes, they wanted the Bubaka King out of government, and they succeeded to a large extent. But um, if you think about the uh, um, Imam uh, Mahmoud Diko, who was the you know the guiding spirit behind the revolutionary call, um, he was called in at some point, you know, um, but he did not even have any um, say in the emergence of Colonel Colonel um, Dow. He said when he got in there, he just felt that he was called in there to be present so that the community would be signed and that it would look as if he um, had given his blessing to uh, the emergence of um, the, 
of the interim president, whereas in the real sense of it, he wasn't consulted at all. So mm -hmm. that's why I say it's uh, bittersweet. Maybe this is not exactly what they expect to have at the end of the day. And, um, you know, they probably be asking themselves um, what's going to happen after 18 months. You know, so a lot of reluctance in going with ECHO's one-year plan. In fact, ECHO's wanted something shorter. 18 months, uh, a lot could change before then. Many of these guys in the berries and uh, jackboots, you know, could um, decide to hang, hang those things off. Someone like Asini Goita, who says that um, 18 months from now, he may not decide to run for president. Right. So those are, those are big issues. But let's keep our fingers crossed on who's going to emerge as prime minister in Mali, mm -hmm. uh, because um, that's, that perhaps could be the joker. Right. Before I let you go, I, I'm just wondering, what are your expectations from the new interim president, uh, Bando? Uh, like you said, we don't know what will happen after 18 months, but what are your expectations? Yeah, so he's, he's a principled guy. He's a soldier, soldier. You know, he's trained in Russia in the 60s, like many of, uh, many of the guys that he worked closely with, um, the former, you know, uh, former military leader who passed on, uh, Musa Traore. Uh, people who know him, his neighbors say, one said that um, he's, he's never known anyone who um, Le Grand has had a quarrel with um, people he knows. So he's someone who's a good, a good guy. This is some of his speech, excellent of his speech yesterday where he said, Many of the things that uh, Bobo Kakete was accused of not doing is going to stand for it, um, that he's going to deal with uh, excess of the military and civilians, he's going to deal with craft. So those are things people um, want to see happen quickly. So on the one hand, he's the guy everyone can trust. I mean, he's someone who's got experience in security circles, he's someone who they think uh, may bring in the, you know, uh, bring in the, uh, the metal when it comes to fighting corruption. But then let's not also forget that he still has to deal with um, uh, the military guys who took over. Asini Goita is still there. So mm. let it not be a case of um, he's the puppet and then the puppet master is the one uh, pulling the strings from behind. And that's something that people um, don't expect him to follow. They want him to be his own man. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, by and large, many people in society are happy with his choice, but a couple of weeks or months from now, we'll probably be saying something different. Mm -hmm.